So with this, okay, we're actually gonna physically start to graph these things now. We're still gonna use all these skills, like nothing goes away, it all builds, 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 right? So with this, we're gonna try and develop the equation. We're gonna do two things. One, you're gonna be given the equation and you're gonna produce the graph. The second thing is I might give you the graph or some information about the quadratic and you're gonna produce the equations. We're gonna go in both directions here. Okay, the first one we'll start with the easy one because you've seen what the equation looks like and we'll produce a graph from it. That's what we're gonna do here. So there's some new terminology that you would have seen had we done unit four first, but I just, unit five seemed to be a better fit with the time frame because you guys got more and more practice. You can see why you get more and more practice with factoring, right? Ahead of today's test. Like we've been doing this all of five and just factoring and solving for X values, right? It's got more time. Okay. Not the most ideal way to do this course, I don't think, but ideal under the circumstances, I think. Okay, some of you can see that. Okay, so here's what we gotta figure out. I'm gonna teach you a couple new things and then there's a couple things that we're gonna pull back on here, okay? So here's my equation. I've shown you, you have an expectation now as to what this thing's supposed to look like. It's a parabola of some sort, okay? Um, <clears throat> there's a fun fact, which we do more of in unit four, so this is a precursor. If there's a negative out front, what might you suppose that means? Just, to, and it's just I don't expect you to know, I'm just throwing that out there. Just bringing your attention to the fact that there's a negative in front of the equation. What do you think that means, if you had to take a guess? Any guess at all? What do you think it's going to Wesley? The will be a negative? Yes, kind of. What, uh, yes. Relative to the picture, let's say, what do you think happens to the picture? Yes, Justice? Okay, okay, yeah, it, that's also, we're going in the right direction, getting closer. What about, yes, Sarah? Ah, uh, it's the direction of opening. So is it opening up or is it opening down? If it's negative, it means it's opening down. Okay, so what I'm talking about is like either your problem is gonna go open up or it's gonna open down. What we just said was the negative indicates that the parabola opens down, okay? So in your direction of opening here, you have opening down. And that is because, I'll highlight it so you can all see, opening down because of the negative. Okay? That's new. Okay, I don't expect you to know that. You know, I expect you to know it now. Now I've told you, but, okay? The next thing I expect you to know, though, is tell me what the x-intercepts are. How do we find those? X-intercepts were another word for solutions, roots, zeros. How do I find those? Yes? Anything absolutely crazy to anybody? Hopefully not. Okay. Those are the x-intercepts. They are points on a graph. We specifically, what did we do? We plugged in zero equals though, right? The point, negative five, zero, three, zero. Those are the two points you're gonna go to the graph now and plot. That's where it crosses the x-axis. We've said that numerous times, we just haven't actually done it. So we go to our x-axis, x is horizontal, remember. We're gonna go plot those two points. One of them's at negative five, and one of them is at positive three, zero. Yes, Justice? Why is it negative five when the equation turns out plus five and then negative three? Good question. What happens if I solve for them?
Less than 5.1, everybody. Pulling it all pieces together. There's a whole bunch of pieces all up in the air. We're just gonna, I'm gonna bring your attention to them. So that's a good question. If you have a question, ask it. I'll bring your attention to it. I, I still think we've laid some groundwork here to produce these graphs, okay? Is that okay? And then the other one is just x minus three equals zero. So x equals three. But because I set the equation equal to zero, both of these are points, zero and, zero, and uh, zero, okay? So then I go plot them. I now know that the graph has to go through those two points. They're on the graph. I know the graph has to go through them. So I know the graph's gonna look something like this. We've already indicated that it opens down too, right? So I know it's going something like this. I don't know what the top looks like yet. That's the issue, okay? I would, you can draw that or you're not draw it. It's just a rough sketch there. I'm just trying to do that to illustrate a point, okay? So that we know, based on the information we've done so far, we're starting to picture or piece together what the graph's gonna look like. The problem is I don't know how high up it goes yet, okay? Is that okay? So the x-intercepts you can write on the line here as being negative five and zero and three and zero. They are points that need brackets. They're coordinates. Okay. Some of these you can do in, in opposite order, okay? I'm gonna jump down to the axis of symmetry for a second. What does that sound like? Symmetry, what does the word sound like? Symmetry, axis of symmetry. Do we know what the word symmetry is? We're shaking our heads, we can yell it out loud. Symmetrical means the same on both sides, right? So you're trying to find where is it the same on both sides? Where's the halfway point, basically, right? Be like, it'd be like your face, right? Like if you were like, you're not gonna tell me your axis of symmetry or face is over here on your left eye. You're gonna say it's go down your middle of your nose because it's in the middle of your face, right? Does that make sense? So we're trying to find the axis of symmetry, the nose of our parabola, if you will. Does that make sense? So where does the middle occur of our parabola? I have two points. Yes, Justice? So it would be the y-axis, right? It goes right between, the, right in the middle of the thing. Okay, kind of. I can see why you, yeah, I can see why you think that, but that'd be like the, yeah, anyway. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not quite the exact middle. How do I find the exact middle? The exact middle is the exact halfway point between these two points, the x-intercepts. So what you can do is you're like, okay, I'm gonna count how many there are here between the x-intercepts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What's halfway? Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Does that look like halfway? Does that look better? Is that okay? Now, what x value does that line go through is my question. Negative one. Negative one. That is your axis of symmetry. x equals negative one. goes through the halfway point, okay? Now, I know the graph is gonna go through there somehow, okay? Again, I still don't know how high up the graph goes, but it goes through here somewhere. I don't know if it goes there, I don't know if it goes all the way up here, I don't know if it goes all the way up there, I don't know. That's the next thing we're gonna figure out. This is what we call the vertex. 
the vertex is the maximum or minimum of the graph. Okay? So, your next question should be, how do I find that? Well, if I were to, I know it has to go through here, right? Somewhere. Up there. I know the x value. Why don't I plug in the x value of 1 into the equation and see what y value comes out? Okay? I'll do that over here on the side. y equals negative 1 half. I'm going to plug in a value of 1 from here. Negative 1, sorry. Into the equation. Negative 1 plus 5 multiply it against negative 1 minus 3. You're just going to do the math on that. It's going to spit out a number. What is it, sorry, you read it? Is it 8 right on? Is it 8, Tobias, sorry? Okay. So y equals 8 when you type this into your calculator. Okay, what do we do with that? Well, here's, I inputted a value of negative 1 for x, right? And what did it spit out? 8. So you can go plot that point now. Right? It's up here. What do we figure the parabola looks like now? You can just connect the dots. Those three dots, that's all you need. You have the picture. It goes something like this. Is anybody just completely freaking out right now? Yes. Yeah. So we have the, like, I know your answer, but I just can't remember. So y equals negative 1 half, and then the 3 plus, like, what happens to the plus 3? You, you just typed in your calculator. But, like, what do you type in the calculator? 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5 or something. Okay. You could type that in if you wanted. Do you just, like, do the decimal instead? Yeah, you could go 0, it'd be negative 0 0.5 times uh, negative 1 plus 5 is going to be 4 times negative 4. You just type that in your calculator, that's how you get 8. It spits it out. Okay? There's one more thing to fill out on this on this table, or this little side thing. All right, that's just the graph, right? This is the graph corresponding specifically to that equation. Right? You can say, I guess I'll ask you a question about this particular point right here. This is an important point. This is the this is the foundation of the entire fourth unit. This point right here, right? Once I, I just want to get through this here. Okay. That is the entire fourth unit that we're going to concentrate on, but it's down here as a point of interest. If I asked you if that point was a maximum or a minimum, what would you say to me? Sorry, what? Did somebody say it? Somebody I, I heard something over here, but it's okay. If, if I asked you if that was a maximum or a minimum, what would you tell me? This point right here. Maximum or minimum? What does the word maximum mean? As high as it gets, a minimum is as low as it gets. Did that get low or high? It got high, right? So it's a maximum, right? So we're going to say, I always write it like this on a test. Some teachers don't do it this. I just say you can write a maximum. You can circle a max at what was the y value at that point. Is that okay? Coco, you want to ask your question now? There's a question. Okay. So, 
What happens to that exponent? What do you do with it? What's y equals negative 0 0.5 times negative 16? What is that? You just multiply it, so it's, it comes out to be y equals 8. Oh, okay. Okay. Here's a question I will for sure ask you on a test. I'm going to ask you a whole bunch of questions, but this will for sure be there, this next one. This is kind of a nice one, actually. This is like, do you guys remember the first unit test with the T and V values? It's like that just with a quadratic this time instead. So what they tell you here, it tells you that it has to look like that. OK? So in part A, you're going to try and create an equation that looks like that. OK, so let's, let's write down a couple things here. Remember. R and S are just two numbers, right? They represent the, uh, the x-intercepts, OK? So I'm just going to write them in my list. That's all. So I'm going to write a list of things that I know and a list uh, like things I know and I don't know, OK? Just one list. So on the right here, you're going to take this at face value because this is the first time you're seeing this, OK? R is equal to negative 3. S is equal to one. Can everybody see what's going to happen from there? And why why that is the way it is, right? R and S are the x intercepts. Okay? Tells you that. Okay? Now I'm gonna keep going here. It also tells me that the graph passes through this point. What does every point always have? Yes, Retta? An x value and a y value. x equals negative 1. y equals 2. What is the only other thing in this equation that I do not know? Let's just highlight them. I know y. I just found it. Or I, we wrote it down from the question. I found x we wrote it down from the question we found s from the question and we found r from the question what is the only thing i don't know in there a so a equals unknown i am going to plug in all the information i know solve for a rewrite the equation that's it I think this sometimes gets thrown out there and it's like this way harder question than it needs to be. This is literally the T and V question from the first test with a little bit more difficulty is all. Right? You have four things. You're trying to find the fifth. So we're just going to plug it in and do the math. That's it. There's like almost no thinking here. The thinking is over as soon as you write your list of knowns and unknowns. Okay? But they're the same. Like when I ask you this, it's going to be the same list of knowns and unknowns, probably. It's probably going to be a question verbatim like this, just different numbers. So you're just going to go like this. Y equals, well, let's, I'll write out the equation so you guys can see what's going where, OK? Y equals AX minus R times X minus T. So not T, S. They're just variables, so it doesn't matter to you too much, OK? Plug in the stuff you know. 2 equals a, I don't know a, x is negative 1, r is negative, negative 3 times x is negative 1 minus s. Just got to be a little bit careful, that's all. Particularly around this little area here, I'll Choose something other than purple because I don't think it's clear. Just got to be a little careful there. You're physically substituting what the value is in for the letter that you've you've said it was. Yes? So, but if x is positive, like in positive 1, but if 
physically substituting it in for s because you've said s equals 1 so you're going to plug it in there for 1 you ignore the fact that there's a minus sign there you're physically replacing s with 1 is that okay now we just did math right we're just this is like basically a linear equation now that we're going to solve for a nothing crazy going on here okay you could do it in pieces 2 equals a negative 1 minus negative 3 is going to turn into negative 1 plus 3 so negative 1 plus 3 is going to be 2 when you type that in your calculator negative 1 minus 1 is going to be negative 2 so the next line is 2 equals a times negative 4 Divide both sides by negative 4. A is equal to uh, 2 over negative 4, which reduces to negative 1 over 2. Rewrite the equation. anybody have any screaming objections I know some of you looked at that and went oh and then it clicked so I know there's a point of interest there that somebody's going to ask about oh that's just because that represents an equation that I could find any y value for for any x I could plug in x equals 3 million and get a y right that's what I want I want something that's powerful that I could plug in things and get out outputs. That's what an equation does, right? That's what I'm after. Okay. Does anybody else have any objection to anything I wrote there? I just want everybody to know, like, why is it opposite? Why do we write that opposite? Retta. becomes positive. Two negatives back to back became a positive. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. The next one we're going to do in unit four. So we're going to... Yeah, we'll do the next one in unit four. So let's get that. Okay. I'm not going to ask you that question on this test. B, yeah. It's asking about a different equation, which we haven't really done a lot with yet. Right? It's the exact same thing, but this... So if you guys want to try this, you can try it. By all means, go for it. But this one's acting about a minimum value. Anytime we talk about a minimum value, we're talking about the vertex. So I'm talking about the equation y equals a x minus h squared plus k. The work is the exact same. In unit four. Oh, that's unit yeah. All unit four. Everything to do with vertex is unit four. I just, the way I have, the way I have it like kind of organized, you sprinkle stuff in as you go. Yeah. And so like, that's why there's some holes here as we start filling backfilling, like because I shifted unit five before four, there's some holes there, which we'll fill later. We'll do this kind of question later. Okay. There is a way to do it with standard form though too. I just don't really want to talk too too much about the, the vertex right now. Okay, that's a whole unit that we're gonna talk about that. I don't want to overcomplicate things. This is meant to be specifically about by this point we've already done unit four, then I could ask you about the minimum and vertex and whatnot, right? That's not a big deal at this point. Had we gone three, four, five. But all, we're gonna spend a bunch of time dealing with that specifically. Yeah, right. 
more factoring time, right? Honestly, I'm not joking when I say factoring. Like, factoring is probably the most important thing you're going to do in this course, this test today. Just specifically this test today, not in the grand scheme of the course, but for your future of mathematics, probably the most important thing in this course. Pretty much. It doesn't go away for that reason. Like, for the reason that it doesn't go away. It just keeps coming up. You know what I mean? So didn't really put a lot of thought into getting this far under this kind of time frame, but I just thought we'll just give you more time to practice factoring because that's the important thing from the course, which is why I shifted five and before four. Okay. Yeah, right. Um, how many points is the test going to be at? I actually have to finish it um, on lunch today. Could be 30. Are we writing at uh, third period? Third period. So it could be northward of 30. I can't. Northward of 30, but it's only three pages. And then just factoring. Just factoring. And the two quizzes. Let's just say the two quizzes. So expansion. Expansion is, oh, yeah. is part of that, that, that Does unit three. It might, it might not. No perimeter. Perimeter's not interesting for, the perimeter's not interesting. Okay, we gotta finish this, we're not done. We're not done, we got 15 minutes, we're not done this lesson. Okay, same thing with this one. We'll do more of that later, okay? For the purposes of your test, when I ask you a question to come up with the equation, it's gonna be dealing with, it's, it'll probably be this question with different numbers have to ask you that. Okay? Unit 4 is a different ballpark altogether and the exam's a different game too. Right? Cuz at that point we've done everything that we're supposed to do. But there's some this is these are just two holes that I don't really want to fill right now. We'll fill them later. It's not really related to what we're doing, so we'll just skip over them, okay? No, because it's act, it's vertical stretches transformations. We'll do that later. Okay? That's it. That, that's nice for you. You know that question, that's a mark on the test. Or a, a question on the test. How to do that. Okay. Don't worry about the other two for now. Okay. This is a little bit of a word. We're starting to make the turn to word problems and like applications here. Okay. Yes. We'll do it sometime next. Well, probably not Monday. We'll decide on Monday when to do it. Might be Tuesday or Wednesday or something. So that guys gives you the weekend anyway. Okay. We'll probably end up moving on to Unit Four in that time, but we'll decide on Monday when to put the test. Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. We only got two more lessons or something. In five. And I'll give you a review period too. Don't fret about that, right? Okay. So all we're doing here is this is this question up here. I put a star beside. With the exception, we're just got some words around it now. Trying to come up with an equation that represents this arch. It's a parabola. So we're going to come up with an equation that represents that thing, right? Okay. So the Hayden arch is a parabolic arch that is approximately 20 meters tall and approximately 22 meters wide. Determine an equation to model the arch. Okay, you can be, s you can be smart in your selection. That really doesn't matter, but let's pretend I drew an axis on this, like an xy axis, a coordinate coordinate system. Let's just pretend I drew one on there. How would you like to do it? Would you like to have the y-axis split the middle and come across here like this? Wouldn't necessarily be my first choice. I would choose to go like this. Sorry, that should be one sec. That's what I wanted to draw. It just wasn't accurate enough for my liking. Why not? 
Uh, I don't have to deal with a negative number. So let's let's just draw our numbers on here, like label it as if we were going to do this, right? Here's y. Here's x. Where does x start? Zero. How wide is the arch here? So I know the other one's over here at 22. I don't know if I have a preference necessarily, but I, if I if I have the option to work with a zero, I kind of want to work with a zero. Okay. Now what? I have information about the graphs x-intercepts, right? One's at zero and one's at uh, twenty-two. Okay, so remember, here's what I'm going to do, okay? I'm dealing with the equation that we've been working with in factored form because factored form is what we've been doing for the last week, so I'm going to write it out again. Or it could be R and S. It doesn't matter. S and T could be anything, right? They're just numbers. They're just variables, okay? You're going to plug things in. Like it's, that's all that's happening, okay? This is the same question we just finished doing. Yeah, Coco. Which number? I haven't done any numbers yet. Oh, that's S and T. S and T, yeah, yeah. That's just factored form, which we've seen, right? This is what ha this is what spits out when we like factor things. It spits out two pieces that look like this, right? Y equals these two pieces. Okay. So let's try and like extract some information here. What do I know about its x-intercepts, or the, the s and t? Retta? Zero and 22. S equals zero. That's the first x-intercept. T is going to be over here at 22. OK. If we go back up to our question from earlier, what else do I need to know? And x and y. Might be a little trickier for this one. It's a little bit of thinking to do. We're going to pull on uh, something we did earlier in the lesson, OK? But here, we've done, is everybody OK with that piece? That's just the roots or the zeros of this parabola, if I were to draw it on a piece of paper or something, right? The other piece, Retta said, we need an X and Y to plug in there. Okay? So, I do know something else, though. I know how tall the arch is, approximately 20 meters. Retta, where am I writing, where am I writing the 20? So, remember, the, it's 20 meters tall, approximately. So, it... We're kind of figuring its tallest point is going to be right at like the vertex piece, right? Or the right in the middle. So it's going to be 20, 20 meters from, or I'll rewrite this like this, 20 meters from here to here. Is everybody okay with that? It's approximately that tall? What is that, right? Yeah. That's your y value. Did you have another question? Go ahead and ask. Good. Okay. How do we get the x value? Is the next question. Because that's the last thing we need. Can I just relax. We're going to ask a question and let it sink in for a sec. Yeah. Because it told you it was 22 wide. Can everybody? I'll ask this question after. Can you see? Can you see why I chose zero and 22 instead of splitting it down the middle? Um, now the next question I asked was, how do I find x? Let's go back, before you answer, let's go back up here for a sec, okay? To the very first picture. What was true when I found the maximum or the y value of that vertex right here? What was the corresponding x value with it? Negative one. Where did that negative one come from? 
The axis of symmetry. What is the axis of symmetry? Retta? It's the midpoint. It's the it's the, the 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 value of x that splits that curve into two equal pieces, which happens to occur at the halfway point between your x-intercepts. Well, the nice thing about this is I have zero and twenty-two. Where's halfway between zero and twenty-two? Oh, what is it? Eleven. So my x value is. Because this occurs at now what? What else is there in that equation up top that I've written? An A. That's the thing I don't know. Same thing as that question I gave you earlier. You have all the information you need. You just throw it into that equation and solve for the A value and then rewrite it. That's the equation that represents that curve. So 20 equals A, 11 minus 0, 11 minus 22. 20 equals A, 11 That seems scary. Is anything in the real world ever nice, perfectly nice numbers? No. This represents something real in the real world. So it makes sense that it's not something nice. Does, what is important, does it make sense that it's negative? What direction is this arch opening? Down. So it, has to, it makes sense that the A value is negative, right? It's opening down. Am, am I completely finished yet? I got one thing left to do, right? The question asked me for an equation that represents that arch. So I just got to rewrite the equation that I have now. Y equals negative 20 over 121 x times. Sure. Would it be better? Would everybody be? Is anybody stressed here with this? I'll just do it anyway. So nobody's stressed. Did that go relatively well? I can't tell. I honestly can't tell with your with your mass on. I can't see the facial expressions. I can't see if people are lost. Like, it's tough to tell. But you can see how, like, the importance of that, like, that's why I'm just going to ask you a question like that. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's a little bit hard. We're going to, like, read words and then somehow come up. Like, that's hard. That's a hard question. But if we started the basics, and practice a couple of these and see what the graphs look like and we practice this and then practice come up with the equation like in number one all of a sudden all the entire question is finished with the exception of just extracting the information that I know from the question the steps are the exact same the hard part is extracting from the question okay that will be it for today